Hello everybody, my name is Ed Budd. Welcome to my rundown of my top three shoes of 2019 so far. Now I do know we got three months left of 2019. Really incredible shoes could come out. They seem to start dwindling in uh, terms of release towards the end of the year. There's still loads of Jordan releases and all sorts of things like that. But in terms of running shoes, it does seem to uh, slow up a little bit. I know Nike got some Shield releases, stuff like that, but very specific use case on those Shield releases. So which of those gorgeous synthetic upper and EVA Pebax outsole beauties have been my favourites so far. Please comment below and let me know which shoes have been your favourites so far this year. Give me a top threes, give me a top fives. You might have lots and lots if you're anything like me. There's so many great running shoes this year. It's tough to pinpoint which one is my favourite. Before I kick off number three, notable mention goes to the Vaporfly Next Percent. Now you might be a bit surprised by that. But up to now, this shoe hasn't truly won me over like the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit did last year. It's certainly a fast shoe. It's certainly a comfortable shoe. It certainly handles water well, but I just don't feel the same level of propulsion. I just don't think it perhaps works as well with my kind of body mechanics and my incredibly poor running form, but I never completely count a shoe out. So it could be that the next percent does still win me over. Maybe I'll grow to love it a little bit more than I already do. Ugh, a cat's attack again. Can't a man just make videos about running shoes without being attacked by cats constantly? What have we got to say for yourself? No, there's no defense, is there? No defense. So let's get this rundown started. So watch the shoe at number three. Number three is the Gyakuso Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. So technically the original version of the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit was launched last year, around right about October 2018. This beautiful colorway of Nike's Vaporfly 4% Flyknit was launched in February 2019. I was very lucky to pick one up very early on. They weren't available for long. They were up on the sneakers app very shortly, uh, but they sold out within minutes. Um, I was very lucky to pick one up from sportshoes.com. Albeit they were all gone within about a day as well. So a very rare version of the shoe with a few little changes here and there. I really love this shoe aesthetically. I think the colors are beautiful. It reminds me of autumn, reminds me of the fall. It's certainly a shoe that you can probably wear out in those wet and slightly more grimy conditions if you're going through some sort of tree lined paths and things like that. It's not gonna look too ridiculous as it starts to get beaten up a little bit. I just love the, uh, the color scheme. Even on the bottom here, you've got these gold colored rubber pieces here, which are typically black on the normal edition of the shoe. So a few slight changes to the upper, give it a little edge for me over the previous bright crimson version. The toe box certainly is a little softer and not so coarse as on the other version of the shoe. I don't know whether that's deliberate, I don't know whether it's just maybe even this one, but it does feel slightly softer. The heel area also benefits from the heel counter being on the outside of the upper. It's a really subtle difference, but it to me makes all the difference. It just feels so much more comfortable back here in the heel area. Once broken in, these shoes allowed me to get PRs on the 5K distance, on 10K, and also at the half marathon distance at the Heron Half Marathon in June of this year. Just everything about the shoes, just that little bit more subtle. The forefoot area upper material here is just a little bit more stretchy. It's a little bit more forgiving, I think, on the top of the foot, that's the word. A really beautiful, great shoe from an aesthetic perspective, but also a performance perspective. Gakuso very roughly translates to reverse run. That very much gives me the feeling of alternative or against the grain ideas and approach to design. I think the earthy tones here really did capture me straight away. I had to get this shoe, it's just simply beautiful. So number three on my list so far this year is the Gakuso Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. So what is the shoe at number two? It's the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. So the Hoka Carbon X is a shoe I grabbed very quickly after release. I know initially it was quite tough to come by. Hoka sold out very quickly. Most of the retail sites that had it available in the UK also managed to get rid of all their stock quickly. Once in my possession, I set about deconstructing it as fast as I could. I love 
the clean cut aesthetic of this shoe. I think again, it is a truly beautiful shoe. The bold sort of minimal lines, the colorway, mainly blue and white with the little yellow tint at the back there. I think it really stands out. From an aesthetic point of view, it's very appealing. And on foot, it's certainly all kittens and creme brulee. And I'm talking about kittens that don't run in when you're trying to make a shoe video. Every time you press the button to start it and they appear. It's like they have some cat shoe video sixth sense. Maybe it's all in my mind. <laughs> I don't know if it's real. Maybe the fact that cats are ganging up on me is just all in my mind. So that tongue, really, really comfortable, a little stretchy, just the right amount of cushioning to protect you from the laces. That toe box is flexible, old school lacing without those unnecessary new ideas. Even without a solid heel counter at the back here, the shoe gives great stability and a really pleasant ride over varied paces. Shoe took a little while to break in for me, I'd say, 15, 20 miles, but it then mellowed out and became buttery smooth. Certainly a great shoe. If you can pick it up a little cheaper than its 160 pound retail price, then ideal. This really formed a great majority of my training for the Salisbury Half Marathon recently. And I have to say, I enjoyed every minute of running in it. Maybe not every minute. There were probably some times where I was really wishing, oh, I wish this training session was over. I'm tired. I really want a pizza. But I think you catch my drift. So, position number two of my top three is the Hoka Only Only Carbon X. So, big drum roll. What occupies the number one position in my top three? Yes, you've probably guessed it. It's the Nike Zoomfly 3. Hi. What, what, what are you doing here? I thought you'd give me another chance. <sighs> I thought someone would have been messing with those boxes. But the glide ride's much heavier than me. I've given you every chance. Oh, please. Go on, get back in your box. Go on. Seriously, this time, position number one is occupied by the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2. So I think this shoe has it all, perhaps apart from the aesthetics. I certainly think it's an odd looking shoe. It's got the weird flare here at the heel and an overly voluminous toe box area. The green color doesn't work quite so well for me here as it does on the next percent or the Nike Pegasus 36. But aside from all of that, this shoe performance wise is a real winner. Very, very comfortable on foot with that new innovative and interesting lacing system providing a real superior lockdown over the forefoot compared to the previous version of the shoe. The tongue, the heel counter and the collar of the shoe are all improved over the Pegasus 35 Turbo. All of those things have been refined and the shoe benefits in terms of comfort and weight relief. I've enjoyed the performance of this shoe in training and found that it really does suit tempo runs, interval and speed work. I think it's cushioned enough for those higher or greater distance uh, mile runs, but also it has enough responsiveness for those faster paced efforts too. Even for those recovery miles, I think you can use it too. Without the carbon plate, it doesn't work against the runner in terms of bringing the paces down for those lower, slower recovery efforts. Only real drawback of the shoe is the price. At 160 pounds, it's quite an outlay. That aside though, you could use it for both training and racing, and that really is the use case scenario that I purchased it for. So that's my top three list of my favorite running shoes so far in 2019. Please comment below if you agree, if you disagree. Please also comment with your top threes so far from 2019. Please hit that subscribe button and make sure you click the thumbs up like to help us propel this video up the rankings. Please make sure you share the video with other runners too. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you. <laughs>